Good evening, everyone. Let's uh, we'll get started with our final session. Um, this is our uh, final uh, class for this introduction to Judaism course, and um, um, I've decided to conclude um, with this particular class the idea of uh, 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 this progression of um, uh, belonging, right? The, the the story of of the Jewish people and behaving the um uh the the doings of Judaism the how to be Jewish uh the the practices of Judaism the mitzvot of Judaism and then we're concluding with um with the believing aspect the 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 belief the thinking the feeling uh the connection to uh to God to a greater power um and and uh, and that that's intentional because um um all of this is is certainly connected that um that you can belong to the Jewish people without living without living Jewishly um I think it's less meaningful of course but you certainly can just be uh by Jewish by birth or by blood um um and you could even live a a a very a, a Jewish life full of practice, um, but that's also kind of empty because practice should be motivated by something. Practice should be informed by something, um, and that's where the believing comes in. And 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 it's a it's an essential piece of of Jewish identity is to have a connection to God. Now, notice I say I don't say belief in God um, because. Um, belief in God is not a Jewish phrase. I think we get that from um, from Christianity that 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 belief is the um, is is the 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 doorway in. Um, it's certainly not for for being Jewish. We've we've certainly discussed that uh, plenty over the the course of this uh, of of these 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 classes. Um, but it's an essential piece, and belief is not. It's not a question. It's just God is. God exists, and the Jewish people have a relationship with God. So the question, "Do you believe in God?" is, um, in in fact, irrelevant. Um, um, that that from the earliest experiences of the Jewish people before there even was a Jewish people, when there was. When there was Abraham and and his family and Jacob and and his family as it expands, they it wasn't just a family uh, it wasn't just a familial ethnic ideal it was a connection to god right god chose Abraham. there would be no abraham if god did not choose abraham and these stories that that uh, that we we see in 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 the torah are are driven by um and united by a connection to god and so it's an essential piece um um i you know, um, I also think it's crucial um, because as human beings, we are naturally religious people. Um, we naturally, uh, it, it's, it's, it's part of our nature to, to wonder about the mystery of the universe and our place in it. Um, and um, when someone says to me, you know, I don't believe in God, um, I usually, my response usually is, okay, tell me about the God you don't believe in. Um, and chances are it's probably, I don't, I probably don't believe in that guy either. Um, and, and so, um, we, you know, that, that, that's why, again, the, the, the phrase or the, 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 the expression belief in God, um, is not really a Jewish question or, or, or Jewish, um, um, statement. There's, you know, we, we have, Instead of belief, the, then I'll say it this way: the word that we usually translate as belief, uh, emuna, or um, it comes from emet, meaning truth. Um, emuna means something like loyalty or or trustworthiness or fidelity to. So it's it's more of a sense of of trust than it is a sense of belief. Um, right. And, and that goes to what I was saying a moment ago, that a belief is not the doorway, the, 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 the lock on the door that, that allows you to enter. 
um, the door's already open. It's or, or or actually, there's no door. <laughs> there's no gate there. Um, it's it's the idea of, uh, of 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 what's 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 our you know what's our connection to or what's the the um, the you know what, what you know, and and that and that's usually based on uh, trust and fidelity. Um, again, the same thing that um, the same way that Abraham had this relationship with God um, um, as depicted in the Torah, you know three, four, four thousand years ago, whenever um, we can, if, if we can pinpoint that to a particular place in time. So that's worth, worth, worth saying there that, 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 um, that the Jewish people as much, as much as, as it is a, a as uh, an ethnicity, a family, a, a way of, of being and doing, um, essential to that is, um, is the religious aspect is that is is manifest in our connection with God. Now, in preparation for this class, I had you read this book, Finding God, uh, which gives many different Jewish perspectives. Um, and one of the the the, the interesting things about um, um, about this book, and 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 I'll uh, and I'll, uh, it, it is that. Um, in the way that it that it presents its its chapters, and I'll speak more specifically to that in a moment, is that it tries to, um, and it does a very good job actually of of uh, of presenting a a a theology. What is God? How do we relate to God? And all that. Um, the challenge of that in 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 the overall arc of of the Jewish experience is that. Um, Jews really don't do systematic theology. We don't have um, um, the, you know, we, we don't have definitions. Um, you know, if, if you're reading carefully, we learn about God through stories. We learn, we, we know about God through God's interactions with human beings. And, and, and when you get to the part about uh, the rabbis and the, and the, the, the um, uh, What's the chapter called? The God in rabbinic literature. Um, that again is is God. We know about God through stories, um, and the rabbis tell stories about God's relationship with with human beings, God's perspective and relationship with with the heavenly host and the angels and things like that um, in rabbinic literature. Um, but there's no systematic theology of this is what God is. We know about God through story. Um, and one of the interesting things about this table of contents um, is um, how it's how it, how it manifests itself in, uh, over the arc of Jewish history, as I mentioned a moment ago. So we have the God of the Bible, and which is twenty five hundred years ago to you know three thousand years ago. We have the God of rabbinic literature, um, um, which is fifteen hundred to two thousand years ago. Um, Philo, who was um, um, living in Alexandria, influenced by Greek thought, and tried to um, merge Greek thought with with the Torah. He was living twenty three hundred years ago. Um, Maimonides, blending Aristotle uh, uh, with with uh, Jewish thought, was living a thousand years ago. Um, Isaac Luria was about four hundred years ago, um, and the mystical tradition is 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 certainly older than that. Um, Spinoza is, uh, we talked about Spinoza quite a bit in our, and, 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 uh, and he lived, um, again, about 400, three, three to 400 years ago. Um, and that's the first six chapters and then chapters seven through 13 are all within the last hundred years. So, so it's very interesting that we have this explosion of, of, thoughts and 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 understanding and re-explanation of God in in modernity in the modern period um even beginning with Spinoza because uh, we spoke about Spinoza being uh, uh, uh the, one of the first like the first modern person um because he was a, an individual without a people um but even so Buber Milton Steinberg Mordecai Kaplan from Heschel right, all these people were living and writing within the last hundred years um and and so I think it's fascinating that like we just don't do systematic theology. We do theology through story. And how do we know about God? We know about God through our connection, right? We celebrate the holidays. We celebrate rituals. That's how we know about God. 
Um, we don't need to talk about God because we just do things and that, that connects us to God. Or we have this connection with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and that connects us to God. And so this idea of, of, of theology as, as other religions might engage in it is, is not, um, is, 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 is not, um, a, a systematic, I mean, it's crucial in, in the, our relationship with God is, 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 is crucial and important, but it's, but the systematic way of thinking and talking about God is, is not inherently, um, it's not inherent in our tradition. It's only in the modern period where people are, um, have to, you know, reinterpret and rethink, um, our relationship with God. And, and for several important reasons, which we'll get to a little bit later. So, um, one of the, the interesting things about, um, um, both the, the, the classical understanding of God, and I mean, um, the God of, um, the, the Bible and the God of the rabbis, because they, they are linked the rabbis are a lot more creative in their explanations, but, um, um, God exists. God is both knowable and unknowable, um, God has a personal name that we cannot pronounce and cannot fathom and cannot grasp. It's yud he vav he, um, um, spelled out, and and um, that is a is a is a declension of the Hebrew word, uh, the Hebrew root meaning to be. And so, God really, God is. Period. Right. <laughs> that's it. Because that's what God's name means. God's name is is a formation of. Um, was is will be so God was is will be like that's God's name and um, and God is existence God can be anything um, and and is active and is known through action um, um, and you know so so we know God through through action we know God through relationship but we don't know God essentially uh, what God, God, what God's essence is other than God's essence is through action. Um, God cares about us and loves us. How do we know? Because God created the world and, and as in God's creation of the world, God calls everything good. And God, uh, uh created humanity and said humanity was very good. Um, God sends prophets. Um, um, this was a major, uh, thrust of, uh, of, 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 uh, Heschel's work that, um, God, loves us and desires us. And how do we know that? Because God sends prophets to tell us when we have strayed, when we have done wrong, because God wants us to do the right thing. God gives us laws, um, both to, um, both to, uh, uh, practice our, our unique faith and our unique tradition, but also to be moral human beings, uh, because that's essentially what God wants. Um, um, you know, God wants us to be, uh, uh, good people, um, to treat others with kindness, to treat the disenfranchised with, um, uh, with compassion and, and deal justly. Um, we spoke about this a bit last week. Um, Israel has a special relationship with, uh, with God, uh, a covenant, um, you know, dating uh, back to Abraham, but also on Sinai with the Torah, um, and a special relationship with, uh, with David, as we'll see later in the, the Bible. Um, that God is is, you know, God is personal and yet unknowable, um, and God expects ethical um, ethical behavior. All these, most of these things are were unique um, to um, uh, to the ancient world, um, and and th this idea of understanding God in this way was revolutionary. Um, the the. God of the rabbis is, is, um, um, an extension of this really, um, um, that, that, um, and, 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 you know, through, through their creative midrash, they tell us a lot more detail, um, that, um, you know, God has many more names than, than are, than just exist in the Bible. And those names um, tell us something about God. So um, where you know, and 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 God's names are are um, are descriptors. They're they're nouns, but they're also just you know descriptors of these are God's actions. Um, 
Um, the rabbis, you know, if we look on page 28, the rabbis give many new new new, new uh, names for God that um, we did not find in the Bible. Um, the Mighty One, Hagvura, the Merciful One, Harachaman, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy Blessed One, um, Hamakom, the Ever Present One, the, the Place, Ribono Shalalam, uh, Master of the Universe. Misha um, Marva Hayaha Olam, which is great, uh, beginning of one of our prayers, the one who spoke and the world came into being, Avinu Shabashamayim, our Father in heaven. Um, and and so um, and the, the Bible has the, the Bible has all sorts of words, right? Um, which the, the personal name Yud Hey Vav Hey Elohim, um, uh, which which is the, the the general name God El Shaddai, um, the mighty one El Elyon, the 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 um, uh, uh, God on high. Um, so all these names tell us all sorts of things about, um, about God. The rabbis also get a little more in depth, um, in that, you know, we, and we, 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 we get hints of this in the Bible, but the God, but, but the rabbis specifically say that, that, um, God is, uh, executes judgment and God is the judge of the world. Um, um, but God is also merciful. Um, and, and, and they really, um, they, they really, you know, uh, uh, also speak more details about, um, the, the bond between God and Israel. Um, so the, you know, there's, there's, there's a, 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 um, uh, there, you know, there, there's, there's a very, I should say anthropomorphic, um, um, explanation, or presentation of God, um, that how do we understand God? We understand God um, through through story. And how do we understand, how do we tell stories? Well, we tell stories in the language of human beings. And the rabbis say this all the time. Um, uh, and they they clarify that, that the Torah was written in the language of human beings, which is why we have these very anthropomorphic depictions of God. Um, uh, I, I, think in, I, I, I think that the rabbis understood this um, inherently, but they don't say it as, as, um, um, as explicitly as they, as they, as they give anthropomorphic explanations, but, but the idea that God, um, has no, um, God has no form and God has no image. And yet we speak of God in all sorts of ways, um, um, and all sorts of descriptors. And, and so it, it's, it's kind of a, a counterintuitive, notion that we can be because god has no set form we can speak of god in all sorts of ways and all sorts of creative ways the, the rabbis give this this great midrash that um that god um uh, uh because god is 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 does not have an, an an essential uh form but god is ever changing and ever and and, and ever different um um in, based on our experiences, we can experience God in all sorts of ways. And so um, they, they, they say that um, when, um, um, when God, when God stood at the, um, uh, when God stood at the, 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 the sea of reeds, um, God appeared as a mighty warrior. And when God appeared at um, Sinai, God appeared as, um, a, a, as a, as an elder. Um, and the rabbis say this is perfectly appropriate because God appears in in the form or in in, in the that the moment what the moment necessitates, because you don't want an elderly person leading you in battle, and you don't want a young whippersnapper giving you laws. Um, and and so um, uh, the, so so the rabbis uh, give us this 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 wonderful idea that God appears to us. And God uh, um, is is with us in different forms and different times when we when we need. Um, you know, God is a comforting mother um, in 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 times of challenge. Um, um, and there's another wonderful midrash um, that where it, it explains why we say that God is. Um, the master of the world and God is all powerful and God is up, God is up there. Um, um, and, and it, it's a, it, it's a midrash about um, Adam, um, uh, the first human being in the garden of Eden. And, and uh, according to the second creation story, um, um, Adam names all the animals and 
so uh, the Midrash goes into this and says, um, okay, name all the animals. And Adam says, okay, that's going to be a dog and that's going to be a cow and that's going to be a bird and that swimming thing is going to be a fish. And after all the animals, um, um, God says, okay, what do you want to call yourself? And Adam says, well, I come from the ground, right? Adama, so I'm going to be Adam. I come from the ground, so I'm going to be Adam. Um, and uh, Adam says, um, can I can I call you something? God says, well, if, if you want to, if you really want to call me something, sure. What do you want to call me? And, and Adam says, well, since you are the master of everything, Adon, I'm going to call you Adonai. And God says, okay, if that's what you're going to call me. Um, and, and so what that teaches us is that this, this idea that God is master over us is from, is is how we describe that from our perspective. It's not necessarily that God actually is, but um, because God is much more than that. But from 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 that perspective, from our perspective, because God is so great, we had to uh, humanity came up with the idea of God being the the Lord, right, and the Master. Because there's there's you know there there the, that those words have 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 connotations that are crucial. I'm going to stop there. Any questions? Um, reading through the book, um, Rabbi, it, it was like, a lot of it was similar, but it was like slightly different takes on the same thing. Um, I did, I did find it interesting, like the, and maybe you're going to cover this, the, the difference between good and evil. And my interpretation of the book was like, there is no like second being, there's no devil. It's just God is both <laughs> is kind of how I got it. Not maybe both, but, but like, there is no like second it's like not a yin and a yang it's more like there's god and then god giveth god taketh away in some ways i guess is that, that's kind of how i interpreted it great so so that's an interesting um question that that um um uh, it's a really interesting question that 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 tradition has has struggled with um um that if you know if if god you know and if god is all powerful um then God is responsible for the, for the evil um, as well as the good, um, and and people have struggled with this in both in ancient times and in modern times. I mean, the the entire book of Job in the Bible is about that. Um, part of um, Ecclesiastes is about that, and the rabbis struggle with this too in in, in midrash, and and then it comes out in midrash, and um, and so right there there is no um, like the, the the mystical tradition does have a sense of what's called the sitra achra the other side. Um, but but there's no devil, there's no Satan, um, and and that's you know that is what you know Christianity separated off evil from God um, by creating Satan and hell and all that. Um, now what's interesting is that there's a figure called um, uh, Satan, the the who in the Bible and in and in and in um, some um, later literature that seems to be the prosecuting attorney prosecuting attorney of the divine council who basically challenges god and and um and and brings up and brings up charges against human beings and, and things like that um but but that is still that 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 person is subservient to to god in the divine host in in in, in jewish uh, uh in jewish literature um um but um you know th there's this idea uh, that um, and, and and this this even informs Jewish practice because um, when you hear bad news, the traditional response is Baruch Dayan Haemet, blessed is the true judge. So meaning God is responsible, or or ultimately, I wouldn't say responsible, but but ultimately, um, um, maybe responsible. Yeah, maybe responsible for for that evil, um, for that bad thing happening. Um, and then there are other traditions, and I think this is very much based in the Bible, um, uh, that, that, um, that evil is, um, it's, it's a force that's just there, and, um, and it's represented by the original chaos that God ordered into creation. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's a, it's a, um, a blind and, um, uh, um, amorphous force that has no will of its own. It's just, it's just there. And God, um, created 
God ordered the world out of the chaos. Um, and that chaos is still in the world and, and, and pops up every now and again, which is why um, you have um, things like natural disasters and, and, and which is why we have free will um, and, and we make poor decisions because that's, that's us, um, that's us, you know, uh, su uh, succumbing to the, the, those evil forces that are lurking beneath the surface. So um, both I think are, 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 are well attested to in, in tradition, um, but certainly not, um, an opposing force that is the complete opposite of God, where God is all love and goodness. And there's like, you know, Satan and the devil, it's all the bad stuff. Um, that's definitely not, you know, that's, that's, um, um, that, that, um, um, you know, you, you get some of this in, 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 in some of the, the, in, in some, um, uh, literature of the second temple period, but that really never made it into the canonical Jewish texts that, that the rabbis pick up and become, become normative Judaism. So, yeah. Um, and what, what we have in, in the rest of, of these chapters, I, I think is, um, um, you know, it, especially chapters four and five are fascinating Maimonides and the mystics. Um, because, Maimonides and the mystical tradition um, have have the same starting point, but come up, but 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 diverge and go into two completely different directions. So Maimonides says that God is is unknowable, and um, and 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 um, and so we can't say anything about God um, because God is be God is beyond our comprehension, and we cannot say anything about God. Um, that the only way to know God is to, to th this higher contemplation and that, and, and that's an intellectual pursuit. Um, and again, God is unknowable. And so we can't talk about, we cannot describe God. All we can do is talk about metaphor. And even that's not such a great thing because we, and we have to acknowledge that what we're doing is talking only in metaphor, but again, God is beyond our knowledge and we can't say anything about God. The mystical tradition says God is beyond our knowledge. And so we have to say everything about God um, because, because God is the all. God is in everything. God's presence is within everything. And so um, in the mystical tradition, you have um, what's called the, um, um, if you, you know, page uh, 73 in the book has um, the, the, the Sfirot, the, the 10 emanations of God, um, and it's it gets to be very complicated stuff, but in essence, these are the ways that God is manifest in the world, and these are clusters of metaphors, and we can and, and everything in the world um, can be um, can be assigned to these emanations of God. So, if we're talking about um, if we're talking about, for example. Um, Abraham. Well, Abraham is Chesed. Oh, okay. So that's that. Uh, that you know, and and all the patriarchs and matriarchs are grafted on here. And these idea and 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 you know, Machut um, or Shechina, which is the lowest, is the feminine presence. But it's also King David, and it's also the moon, and it's also water, and it's all. So there's these are clusters of metaphors that again, you know, God is unknowable. The Ein Sof, the the the, the without end. And so we have to say everything and we know it's metaphor. We're just going to keep throwing metaphors and keep saying that God is this and God is this and God is that. Um, whereas Maimonides, uh, and, and I've heard one of my teachers describe, you know, Maimonides is the, is the ultimate rationalist, right? He's Aristotelian. Um, uh, he, he blends Aristotle, um, right? The, the prime mover, the idea that Aristotle's prime mover. Well, for Maimonides, that's God too. Um, but for the, one of my teachers many years ago said that, uh, that, that the mystical tradition is the revenge of mythology, um, because it's all mythologized. It's all, um, it's all metaphor. Um, and, and everything, um, is God, everything that we do, everything, every, every blessing we say, we can invoke God. Um, we are uniting the masculine and feminine forces of God whenever we do anything. And, and that's, and, and, and the, 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 um, um, the actions that we have that, that we, we do here um, arouse the divine forces um, and get them all excited um, and get get them all moving. Um, and and so it's um, 
you know, the, these are both medieval, um, uh, medieval um, uh, uh, creations as far as this, these philosophies, but they still are with us today. Um, um, and and then we get into the more modern period um, where we're talking about, um, um, you know, Buber and Steinberg and Kaplan and Heschel, where where Buber um, uh, very much uh, was talking about relationship. He 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 was he um, was a student of the mystical tradition, but uh, and and so he was talking about relationship and and the idea of I thou um, um, that that we have relationships with 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 all sorts of people. Um, um, some are transactional. But some are deeper, and and uh, those are the I and thou, the ones where where God exists in between, um, um, and um, I, I think I think two of the most important thinkers um, for the for twentieth century Judaism are Kaplan and Heschel, um, uh, and Kaplan really came up with. A, and this is called the religious naturalism of uh, that's what the chapter is called the religious naturalism of of, of Kaplan, um, and he uh, you know to 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 go back to the conversation about evil he said you know God was certainly not evil but even more so God is um, what he calls the power that makes for salvation um, salvation not in some salvific Christian sense, but but salvation as in self-actualization. He he would put it in those psychological terms that God is the, the the sum total of all of the 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 characteristics that are a force for good in our lives. Um, he rejected the idea of God as um, of God as other, or as or at least as God not other, but as God as a thing, um, and 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 very much spoke about you know the idea of um god as um as the 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 galvanizing forces within us that 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 move us to do good and connect us to our community um um he also um rejected the chauvinistic aspects of chosenness um that we are not better um and 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 chosenness was actually um in a in a modern democratic world um chosenness is a is an antiquated idea and we should jettison that from our um from our thinking um and 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 so um one of the the you know and and that's why it's called religious naturalism that that it's just the natural way of being that that it, that god is not this this other thing acting upon us but god is what brings us together and 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 compels us to do good and to be good um and and so um and and i think that kaplan was um um really and as we spoke about, I think we spoke about this in our in our in, our, in um, uh, several weeks ago. Um, Kaplan was saying everything that everybody was thinking, but was too afraid to say. Um, and so the, the, this idea was is very um, uh, was you know uh, it wasn't appreciated in its own time, but I think it's very resonant to um, uh, with 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 Jews today um, that. Um, you know that we don't necessarily want to think of ourselves as better, although I, I'm not sure that what, that's what chosenness actually was, um, in, in its even its original sense. Um, but um, certainly that that God is not this thing out there that acts upon us, but things that, that but the but but the 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 divine force that works within and through us. Um, uh, very uh, very important stuff, um, and then Heschel um um was the chapter calls it the depth theology of of heschel um he was also very much um influenced by the mystical tradition and um the idea of radical amazement so that, that that god is the ineffable that's what he says but but um that but it's beyond our comprehension and that there is you know heschel articulated this idea that that um um he one of his books is named God in Search of Man, right? That's that's that God again. That guy, the, the idea that God loves us and God is God. God wants to be in relationship with us. And for Heschel, mitzvot were the way to 
um, were, were the way to exercise that relationship. Um, one of the one of the revolutionary things that Heschel did was he said that it's not just the ritual mitzvot that connect us that 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 God wants us to to that, that put us in relationship with God, but it's the ethical mitzvot that put us in relationship with God, which is why Heschel was. Um, uh, uh, at the forefront of the civil rights movement, and and was uh, um, such a, such a uh, um, an advocate and an ally of um, of Dr. King um, in the civil rights movement because he believed that the ritual meets sorry that that the the interpersonal meets vote were were uh, and especially um, interpersonal meets vote with respect to other human beings, not just within the with one's own Jewish community. Um, that those were as crucial as the um uh as the ritual meets vote were um and and this idea of 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 pathos that he speaks about that um um that you know god is not just the the prime mover um god cares um because you know for um you know Maimonides, in some ways, because he's an Aristotelian, has has trouble articulating why God should why God cares about us. But for for Heschel, God loves us. God cares about us, um, and um, and and wants um, you know you know God uh, is is you know as we see from the from the Torah, God is an emotional being, and that's because God loves us, um, and so. Um, we we speak to God. Um, we do mitzvot, which put us in relationship with God, um, and God, you know, God wants us to to be good, and that's how we connect with God. Any um, any questions there? I'll pause there for a moment. Any other thoughts and opinions or or uh, um, other questions not specifically related to the to to what I just talked about? I figured there'd be lots of them. We're talking about God. I mean, I I think I have a, an opinion or op-ed, right? Um, I I my interpretation or thought around it was that you know. We, we follow those ethics and morals and we, we practice Judaism and following the Jewish life. And that is a guidance for any um, natural base perception of God in the world or the world that he created, right? So there could be negative effects. And, you know, the comparison to Christianity with Satan, you could have a storm or a hurricane or natural natural disaster, but that is part of what God created within the planet, but we have the guidance and preparation by God to deal those situations and to overcome it in a way that we can become stronger or deal with the negative aspects, right? And I, I, I think that's kind of like, you know, you said earlier in another class is that we go through prayer and um, to, to prepare or, you know, well, it, it guides us like God's not there as our savior or helping us move through these by God, but he's preparing us to go through these moments in our life that we may deal with. So. Well, I, I think that's part of it that, that, um, you know, uh, that, um, you know, we often hear about, um, you know, natural disasters is acts of God. Um, and, and I hate that term. And I hate that term because I, I don't think they're acts of God, um, right? They, you know, they happen to be imprinted into the the natural law and that, that, the natural way the world works, but um, they're not acts of God. The acts of God are what we see when people help each other in the aftermath of, of, of these disasters, right? So, um, and that's a, that's a very much, that's a, that's a, um, a, 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 you know, that would fit um, both in to Kaplan's and also to, to Heschel's way of, uh, of, of, of thinking. Um, um, and, and again, the idea of, of prayer, uh, as we mentioned, you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, prayer is how we raise our awareness and prayer is how we, um, uh, you know, galvanize ourselves 
to uh, to act in the world. Um, for for Heschel, prayer would be like prayer is the way we speak to God, um, and we we do so in in a in, in a in a specifically Jewish way. Um, but you know, um, but but God calls out to us, and prayer is how we one of the ways that we respond to God. Great. Um, there's another question from um, Alyssa. Yeah, I was just having a question. Where do you think Herschel's and um, Kaplan's theology overlaps? Because I feel their view of God is very different. Like Herschel views God much more but as like it's Heschel. Deity. Just want to correct you, Heschel. Yeah. Heschel much more as a deity than like Kaplan does. Kaplan views it like much more as like God as a force and just a natural occurrence where Heschel sees it much more as like an all-powerful deity, it seems. Absolutely. And that that's very astute. Um um that and 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 um you know for for heschel god is certainly other capital o um and um god is one to be in relationship with god has emotions and god loves and god desires and and um and um um and, and so they're you know they're they're his definition, um, you know, is, you know, for, for Heschel, it's, it's relationship. It's being in relationship with God um, that, you know, there's, there's the divine call um, and there is, um, there is the response to the divine call. Um, and for Kaplan, you know, there's, you know, it, it's complicated. Um, and, uh, you know, Kaplan believed that God was other and, um, but also, but but that God acted through human beings, and 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 God's God is known through our actions, um, and um, is and 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 I and I think that th this is one of the things that was challenging, um, and is 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 in some ways, you know, um, um, still unclear for many people who. Uh, uh about 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 Kaplan um you know because he really you know he really borders on on you know you know is he a deist or is he not like uh, uh, and I mean deist in the sense of does he believe in God that is that that is an other that we speak to um um it, it's it, it's it's tough to say I mean for 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 Kaplan God is much more about um not necessarily a, a, a force, but um, God is the, as, as he says, the power that makes for salvation. God is all the, the sum total of all that is good um, and, th and that compels us to be good. Now, is that, um, and, but, but, but on, on the other hand, Kaplan was still a deist, um, that, he, that he still thought that God was, was separate, not just within. So how do you square those two things? it's it's challenging it's you know some people still have those questions about that but i think i think heschel's was much more um um clear in his um or at least can i will say consistent much more consistent in um in god as other and us being in relationship with god and responding to the divine call uh there was a comment in the chat um i uh Religions, the natural world. Uh, if the natural world, animals that are not created in the image of God, and God is the divine within us, how does the nature? How does nature then reflect God? Sorry if the question isn't well thought out. Um, so, your your you know, humanity is created in the image of God. Heschel specifically wrote about how we can see God in nature and relationships with others. If the natural world are not created in the image of God, and God is the divine, is the divine within us, how does nature then reflect God? I don't know that. So. Um, I don't know that nature does reflect God only in that we can experience God's power through the natural world, like, um, in, in, in the experience of, and so Heschel would say, uh, Heschel began many talks like this. He would say to people, um, his audience, um, a wonderful miracle occurred on, on, you, on your way here. Did you see it? And people are like, oh, well, he's like, the sun was setting. 
and whoa, and and that's his idea of radical awareness, uh, uh, radical amazement. That that just th that the fact that we exist and the world exists and there are natural laws, like that's worth being amazed at, um, and 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 that's worthy of the divine call of, of of a response to, and that's the divine call, and that's worthy of a response. And our response should be ethical living and and prayer and mitzvot, um, and so. Um, nature is, you know, Heschel would ask us to, to um, be aware, really, radical amazement, to be radically amazed by everything that we see around us. Um, um, you know, who's ever been on an airplane? You're flying in a metal tube in the sky. Like, what? That's really amazing. Like, we can be radically amazed by the ingenuity and technology that transports us in very little time to the farthest reaches of this world. That's pretty cool. Um, and and that that gives, you know, that, you know, that's that's radical amazement at human ingenuity. Um, so so I would say, um, you know, and 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 that's and that's you know part of the divine um part of of of, of God's revealing God's presence to us. Uh, Mark, you had a question. There we go. So um, I, I kind of capture, kind of like clung on to the thing when you said, um, when you said at the beginning, you talk about, did I flip this camera around? Yeah, Sorry. you did. Look at your table. <laughs> eh, see the mess. Right. <laughs> um, so you talked about like how Christian, it's like belief. And then Judaism is more about um, getting closer to God. And that's one thing, like trying to understand that in the conversion process, because I feel when you say getting closer to God, I, I understand that to be like traditions and prayers. And, but those are also created. I mean, humans, man, woman, women created those traditions, passed them on through stories. Like stories are told by people. So as, as like I make this journey and anyone else makes this journey through Judaism, like how would you best describe if there even is a description on getting closer to God versus just believing in God. Cause I feel like in Christianity, there are prayers to God, but I mean, but that, but the belief is there, but here we're taking like, it's like, we're taking the next step. It's like, we're moving, we're, we're walking towards God versus just knowing he's in the background. That's interesting. So it's an interesting way to put that. Um, you know, so I think, um, this is um this, this is something that, that that has been articulated really well um in in um um in in the 20th century by by rabbi by by my you know liberal rabbis and thinkers um and it's even been picked up by modern orthodox now um but it, it's the, the, the you know when when, when in, in the bible um, and even among the rabbis, you know, God is a commander. God is well above us, and God dictates, and we follow. And we we are are uh, you know Jews are obligated to do these things. Um, but um, in 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 a, in a in a you know in modernity in the modern world, we don't we don't like to be obligated to things. We like to choose what we're doing. Right? <laughs> we we don't want to be obligated, um, or we or at least we want to choose. The things that we're obligated to, the, you know, choose our obligations, um, and we commit ourselves to those things, surely. But we want to choose what we're obligated to, um, and so um, the the way to think about this is that um, the the best way to think about this is that um, that our entire tradition. Going back to the Torah, right, and 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 this is one of the th one of the one of the um you know one of the the reasons why Kaplan was excommunicated, um, um you know biblical scholarship tells us that the Bible was not the Torah was not written by God um, or Moses, and that kind of makes a lot of sense um, just based on a, you know a lot of clues that 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 you have to like kind of pepper over um, if you want to um, say that God or Moses wrote it, and you can either dismiss that. Or you can embrace it. Um, and what Kaplan did was Kaplan embraced it. And Kaplan said that um, the Torah is the ongoing expression and ongoing religious 
search for God. Um, and sure, people wrote it, but this was a genuine effort to 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 understand what that what that divinity is, what 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 God is. Um, Heschel Heschel said something very similar, but 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 put it in much more traditional terms. Um, Heschel said that everything is midrash. Um, Heschel would say that that um, and and what he what he meant by that is that you know so midrash is is acknowledged midrash is a is is a a human endeavor um, right that the rabbis are, are are explaining stories in the Bible by by creating you know more in depth and more creative stories so that they are. Um, they, they, they elucidate more for us. Um, but to say that everything is Midrash, it means, it, it means a very similar thing that, that we are, that, that human beings are responding to the divine call, right? That's what Heschel would, would say. Um, and, and so, um, that's, that's what we're doing. We are responding to the divine call. Um, and we do that. And, and so, and so maybe, you know, maybe mitzvot are are the uh, the the um, the Jewish um, the the as Kaplan would say the folk ways of the Jewish people, um, um, and like that this is just what Jews do, um, or or maybe they are divine obligations. But even so, as 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 Heschel would say, but they're divine obligations because we as Jews have obligated ourselves to them. Um, and and so that's that's what this being in relationship is. It's it's um, it's responding to the divine call. Um, that um, you know, there's a um, there's a famous, very, a very famous um, um, uh, mystical tradition where um, where they are um, uh, where a bunch of rabbis are are are, are debating. Um, what happened at Mount Sinai? Um, of course, this is a crucial. This is this is this is the, the genius of the Jewish tradition because, like, the foundational moment of our people and the, and our tradition is like debating about what happened here. Like, we have multiple versions of what happened at the most foundational moment of our people. Right? It's crazy. But so 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 well, one one person says one rabbi says that um, God gave everything. God gave the entire Torah. When uh, God uh, says, no, no, no. God gave just the 10 commandments. I said, no, no, no. God gave just the first two commandments because th those are the only ones phrased in the first person that I am Adonai and you shall have no other gods before me. Um, and another rabbi says, no, no, no. God gave less than that. God just said the first word of the, of the 10 commandments, Anuchi, which means I. And then somebody else said, no, 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 no. God didn't even say that. All God did was said the first letter of the first word. Now, you've all taken Hebrew at this point. So you know the first letter of the first word, Anochi, is Aleph. And what sound does Aleph make? It doesn't make a sound. So all God did, it was, it, it, the, 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 all God spoke was, right? That's all God did. And everything else, is a response to that divine call. Um, so I think that's 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 um you know that 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 story really encapsulates um, how how I think we should think about this that 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 our tradition is you know do um, you know we 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 you can think about this in a very literalist way. Um, I think I actually personally think that that actually lessens God because it 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 makes God much more concrete if you said that God spoke in these exact words. Um, but if God only spoke the first letter of the first word, right? God, that's an invitation to the conversation. Um, and that necessitates response. And everything that flows from that is the human response to the divine call. So, I mean, I guess like kind of what you're saying then, essentially anything is answering to the divine call. Like today we are in, in some ways learning more about this. Yeah, and, and, and it, the divine call. Well, yeah, I mean, and and look, <laughs> there, there, um, it's it's an ongoing process, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's an ongoing process, and 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 look, there there, um, there are boundaries to that. There are clearly like things that that are beyond normative. And look, and and, and 
Jewish Jewish interpretation and Jewish creativity allows a lot. There are things that are beyond those 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 uh, you know mm-hmm. those, those boundaries certainly. But within those boundaries of what of what Judaism can be, yeah, that's a lot. And 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 we are all individually responding to that divine call as much as we are collectively. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Any other thoughts, questions? Greg, you look puzzled. Yeah. No, I'm I'm thinking. Yeah. Deeply here. I'm trying. I'm like questioning it, right? Not in like a bad way, but yeah, no, no, good. no, it's good. Um, like I, you know, I took your thoughts that you've been discussing here, and that I've been kind of arguing within my mind, and I'm thinking of you know. Good, you does that. <laughs> arguing within my own mind. On the one hand, on the other hand. <laughs> so. <clears throat> You mentioned that you kind of disagree with the thought of, you know, natural disaster being an act of God. And we talked about how God speaks to us and we act, you know, with with God speaking to us. You know, And then also Kaplan says we come together in, in times of need as a community. We, we, we we're strengthened by each other to move through the, that moment. And I'm, you know, paraphrasing. Right. <laughs> but um my thought is like we have these, you know, um, God bless, you know, I'm not going to say that, but, uh, you know, like we have these moments of, you know, people within our communities, uh, you know, the you know, terrorism, I guess, is a good example, or local terrorism, or things that affect us in the daily life. And what I'm arguing with myself is that are we the failures of that individual acting in the way that they have in a bad moment? Because we didn't come together as a community to support that person. I'm I'm not sure I follow your specific question. So like, let's say there's this, for example, a shooting, they're terrible. A person acts and they like an active shooter, right? Is it us failing as a community not to come together to help support that person? Or is it them failing because they aren't, you know, letting God speak to them? Well, ultimately, we have free will, um, and 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 so, um, it's so that's one aspect of it. Um, another is that, um, you know, I would imagine, um, and, and I, I um, that that. Most people who commit violent crime are not regular uh, attendees of houses of worship, um, and and and, and <laughs> right. What I'm thinking too. That, that's what I was arguing with myself. But right. So so I I think it goes both ways in the sense that you know on the one hand we do have a responsibility um, to create communities of good people. On the other hand, um, you know there are you know people ultimately make make their own choices and. And and so I, I do think that um, you know we we are living in an increasingly secular age, um, and that leads to all sorts of breakdowns in community because um, you know religious groups are inherently moralizing. Um, they 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 you know they temper you know religion. Good religion tempers people's um, uh, uh, um, impulses, and the rabbis speak about this very clearly: um, that we have a good impulse and an evil impulse, um, and we have to cultivate that good impulse. Um, and some people just don't, um, and um, and we are living in a time where there are forces that are. Um, moving against um you know religious communities in all sorts of ways that 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 to undermine um moral norms yeah yeah right so um yeah i mean there's there's you know the the book that i had you read um you know it's is really just a a um a sampling of 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 these different understandings of god and and yet as you can see there are many um different 
understandings of God, and 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 that's okay. There's, uh, you know, there's 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 really there's a lot that 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 can be said, and there's there's many different Jewish understandings of 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 God of what God is and how we speak about and and define God and our relationship to God. Um, it's something that that is also an ongoing process individually um, that, you know, the, you know, as, as we grow and as we mature, we're going to have different understandings, different relationships with God, uh, you know, from, from childhood to, to teenage years, to young adulthood, to older adulthood, to, um, you know, uh, to elder, elder life, um, and, and that's great. Like that's, we, we, we should, I mean, look, the name Israel means struggle with God, right? That's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what we do. Um, and that's done in all sorts of ways. Um, one of, one of the, um, you know, um, in the Bible, God constantly tests both individuals and, um, and collectives and groups of people. Um, and sometimes we succeed and sometimes we fail. Um, and, and, um, that, you know, and, and that's an ongoing relationship, but, but even so God still wants to be in relationship, um, with human beings. And this is, this is, um, um, you know, very much, uh, um, you know, from, from Heschel's reading that God wants to be in relationship with us. Um, um, however much and however deeply we choose is is certainly up to us, but that invitation is um, is is there, um, and um, and and you know not for nothing the first chapter of the Torah is about God, right? Who's who's the main character in the Bible? It's God. Um, there's a wonderful book came out about 25 years ago, maybe a little more. It's called God: A Biography. Um, and it's by a guy named Jack Miles, I think. And he, he basically, he, he writes a biography of God, um, um, tracing God's evolution throughout the, the Hebrew Bible as if it were one continuous text, fascinating book. Um, and, um, and, you know, God is very anthropomorphic. God is, um, is and 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 as the rabbis say, the Bible speaks in the language of humanity. That we, um, um, I've heard an expression that God created humanity in the divine image, and 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 we um, and we should return the favor. Um, that that sometimes in order to um, to relate to God, we need to speak about God in the language of human beings. Um, um, and, um, and so, um, and some more modern thinkers want to move away from that. Kaplan, certainly Harold Schulweis, he's briefly mentioned in your book. He talks about predicate theology that, that God is not a, a, a noun, but God is a verb or, or, or an adverb that godliness, he speaks of godliness that, that, um, that compassion is godly or uh, justice is godly, um, that these different attributes are godly, meaning we, number one, that God is not a noun, but number two, we can embody these godly attributes. Um, and that's how we um, connect with God. And that's how we channel God's presence in the world. So again, lots of, lots of, um, of, of, um, uh, of understanding that, uh, Somebody said, "Oh yeah, you're reading God's Word now." Yeah, it's a, it's a great, uh, um, uh, it's a great book. God is uh, God is a verb uh, by Schulweis. Weiss. Yeah. Um, so um, again, this is um, this is just to give you a, a taste of the the many Jewish understandings of God, and hopefully something resonates with you. Um, Hopefully that 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 um, you feel that that one of these, um, um, or at least, at least one of these resonates with you, um, and others might not. And you might say ah, that that doesn't make sense to me. I don't I don't I don't I don't 
buy that. That doesn't resonate with me. That doesn't, I, I don't connect with, to that, to that understanding. And so that's, that's fine. And that, you know, um, but, but really it's, it's an ongoing exploration um, of, of your own relationship with the divine and, and how that is um, and, and how Jewish practice both informs your understanding and connection with God and is informed by your connection and understanding of God. So any uh, other thoughts, questions, comments, reflections, any of the above? I'm going to, I just like to reflect like how I keep, as we hear these conversations and I've listened to everybody, I just wonder how much of my brain has been programmed in such a way that because of my previous experiences that makes makes this this jewish feeling of god in that relationship less that little bit harder to obtain because you have to unwire some things as well you know yeah. like how much easier if i'd have you know been born and raised into that tradition and not have to rewire things but i think one of the ones that that like kind of my mind really confuses me and like i like it it confuses me in the good way is that you keep saying there's not one right way, you know, like when you're Catholic, there's one right way. <laughs> so, and it out, and that's like half the, the Christian feud is who has got the right way. Yeah. And then here we're like, hey, there's lots of right ways, you know? Right. So it, it's interesting to watch those wires kind of untangle in my brain. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of un unlearning that's going on. Um, it, it's, it's very interesting that, 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 um, Jews disagree about a lot and we fight about a lot of things and, um, you know, Jewish communities, um, separate, um, and, you know, and, and, and they're in, 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 you know, the, the, the medieval period and in the early modern period, Jewish communities, that were next door to each other didn't like each other because they you did you do this practice this way or you do this practice that way and and look even in in, in America people form their own shoals all the time um, as breakaways from other synagogues but it's never over God <laughs> it's over you know um, I don't like your rabbi or it's you know or, or or this community you you do this holiday wrong or you do this particular practice wrong. Um, we fight about a lot of things. We don't really fight about God because we don't have a doctrinaire um, way of thinking and talking about God. Um, there are certainly a, a lot of wrong ways, and, and as I was mentioning before, you know, ways that um, descriptions and, and, and depictions that are outside of the boundaries, certainly. Um, but but within within acceptable boundaries, there's lots of diversity and ultimately um it's something that 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 is within our own um within our own heart and within our own conscience um and that is um um and that's not something that i mean i i i know that that you know, we can look at the history of christianity and see that like people have gone to war and done lots of terrible things over those conceptions, but those are all really internal. And you can't really argue about that. You can argue about how somebody does something wrong. You say, you do that wrong. I was like, okay, well, I don't think I do. So whatever. Um, but, but to, to say that, like, you know, your, your conception of something is wrong. Um, I don't know how you can prove that. I don't know how you can disprove that. It's um, it's, and, and so, yes, it's, it's, there's lots of, lots of diversity within, because it's, it's ultimately up to our own conceptions and 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 perceptions and and certainly as i said before it, it informs what we do um and um uh and and can be informed by our connection with god but not necessarily a um uh but but that's not the the you know the uh that's not the dividing line yeah yeah. And it's interesting to me too, like how much of this process, it's, it's not just the changing of your religion. It's, it's the conversion to the peoplehood. Yeah. Right. And there's yeah. so much more than just like, and understanding how it all works together. 
it, it's a big process. Yeah. And that's why I said before, like th this was never the gateway. <laughs> this, you know, the, the belief part is was never the gateway. It's never, you know, that that's, that's not, that's not the door. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's much bigger than that. Um, um, and, and, and so we, um, you know, we, we, we struggle with those things and ultimately, um, that's not something that we can, um, we can criticize and, and, and really that's, that's one of the ways that, um, um, modernity and, and, um, and has really benefited the Jews that, um, to, to, to the, the idea of freedom of conscience, um, um, and the idea to freedom to worship on our own way and to have our own, um, right. And to have our own understanding of, uh, and our own relationship with the divine, uh, with the divine, um, that was not the case in Europe. We talked about this several weeks ago, but it was certainly the revolutionary idea of America. Um, and that fit very much with, um, with Jewish, uh, um, with, with Jewish ideals. Yeah. So there's a comment in the uh so there's a comment about the lighting of the of the menorah, right? There's um there's a debate between Hillel and Shammai, should you light um increase in light and decrease in light? Um in, in, increasing a candle or decreasing, starting with a decreasing. Um and Hillel one, we increase by one candle per night. Um 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 uh what is it we follow the tradition light one each night because they had to kind of review the other's custom um um i you're you're so that comment conflates two different stories of hillel and shammai but but still i think it um uh because um i'm not sure why uh, i can't remember off the top of my head why hillel's was chosen uh hillel's was chosen because we increase in holiness. we don't want to decrease in holiness we want to increase in holiness um that's why we add a candle um but in another story we favor the teachings over hillel because um um, um because they were you know kinder uh and, and listen to the other uh, opinion so um that's going to conclude our um our session this evening and our um full session of, uh, of intro to Judaism, uh, courses. Um, for those of you who are, uh, interested and in, in conversion, I know many of you are, and we've spoken about this. Um, we are going to have a separate meeting at some point in early, probably early February. So we'll meet in person in early February. Um, I'm very busy in January, so we're going to um, skip that month, but we're going to um, and collectively talk about the process going forward um, and um, and set up beyond that individual meetings with people and and, and chart individual um, paths for each of you who are specifically interested in conversion. Um, um, I know many of you on this call are, and, and, and so, um, I will, um, be in contact with you probably after the first of the year, um, just to, to schedule that meeting and to, um, to have those conversations, that, 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 that initial general conversation, and then the individuals ones will, will, uh, work with after that. Um, um, but, um, I would, uh, before we conclude, like to, um, um, wish everyone a happy Hanukkah, um, and, um, a, a wonderful festival of lights and, um, continued learning, wish everybody continued learning. One of the, so Hanukkah, um, means has, has very similar, two very similar roots. One literally means dedication. Uh, uh, Hanukkah comes from the word meaning dedication uh, as the Maccabees dedic rededicated the temple um, when it was uh, liberated and purified. Um, the other root um, um, comes, uh, was related to the word uh, chinuch, which means education. So um, I, um, I wish you continued dedication and continued education uh, as uh, as you go forward, um, and um, we'll uh, we'll see you around soon. Have a great night, everybody.